my Chatter with Purple Color Life, you can see. I just got the Toro Time Cutter loaded into the 6x12 car mate trailer. We are going to do the cemetery mowing today, but, but we also have a new place that we're mowing. We do run this little side mowing business here, and at Purple Color Life, we're, we're adding one property that we're mowing starting today. So I wanted to show you what that's like and what we'd kind of do to prepare for mowing a new property. You'll notice I do have the Isotunes Pro 2.0 on, but I've also got my 3M work tunes here. I want to talk to you today about after mowing so far for a couple months this summer with both of these, which one I like and, and why. So we'll go over that later in today's video. Stay tuned for that. But for now, I need to get some ethanol-free gasoline into the time cutter, need to get the trimmer back into the truck, and we're ready to go mowing. So you saw me coming in here to the new property that we're going to be starting to mow and we actually came up last night to scope out the area. There's a couple things you need to do before you before you start mowing a new property. When we came last night, we looked at all the property borders to see exactly what area we were mowing. We looked for stumps, we looked for rocks, we looked for things that would be obstacles as we're mowing. And then the other thing we looked at is how we're going to get in and out of this property towing the trailer. So I had to actually drive by, find somewhere to turn around and come back because this driveway comes in at a steep angle off of the main road so it would be impossible for me to make the turn coming from the other direction. The other thing I need to find out and we, we kind of scoped out last night is where I can pull the truck and the trailer to turn around in this property. We had to look for soft spots in the land, had to look for a, an appropriate turnaround area long enough for our truck and trailers. You can see the grass behind me is pretty high. This desperately needs mowed. We may have to do it multiple times. We'll probably set the mower high first, go over it, and then probably do it again. We're gonna start with this section. This first time we were ever mowing this property, we wanna do this section first and see how it turns out. And then we'll do down around the house area. There's a little bit of a incline there. Not more slope than what the zero turn can be used on, but certainly I'd rather start here. We do have a couple of exciting announcements coming up on the channel in the next month or so, so stay tuned for that. More information to follow in upcoming videos, but lots of exciting things going on here at Purple Collar Life. We actually weren't looking to take on any more mowing responsibilities. You know, we do our own land, we do the cemetery that we take care of, but we actually got approached by the owner of this house and asked if we would go ahead and mow it. We'll probably do a future video on running a small lawn care business and what my recommendations are as far as equipment, um, pricing, and how you take care of multiple accounts. down to one push mower. I still haven't got that Husqvarna started yet. I actually ordered a new carburetor for it. Had it all torn apart. I actually was going to make a video on that, but sometimes when you just need to get things done, you don't have time to make a video. I also this week repaired a sink, uh, tore that mower apart and did a couple other projects, made it a new path through the woods. And I really would have wanted to make video of that, but I also just needed to get things done. So. Jennifer's got the 3M headphones on since I'm wearing the Isotunes Pro 2.0 and she's going to start mowing over by those buildings. She this year is really taking a better effort at protecting her hearing. When she had COVID earlier this summer, she actually lost the hearing in her right ear. So now she, that hearing is back, but she definitely wants to take better care of her ears because she realized what it was like to not be able to hear. So.
even though we came and scoped this out last night, you still have to be really careful mowing because like I said, our first time mowing this, we don't know where there could be little stakes or things that we're not aware of. So this is actually the time you have the most potential for damage on your machines. It's the first time mowing a new property. a good opportunity for me to talk to you about the Isotunes Pro 2.0 and those 3M work tunes. Now the 3M work tunes I have are the Bluetooth and AM FM radio. You can see that's what, that's what Jennifer is wearing right here. And I really like those. I've been happy with them. The only downside to them is you can't wear a hat. And I'm pretty light on the hair here on the top of my head, so I like to have a hat to protect the top of my head from the sun. You can see poor Jennifer here, that mower in the deep grass those mowers just do not do a great job when the grass gets deep. It starts to build up, and this mower does not have a side chute on it. So everything's supposed to be mulching up in there. But you can see, you know, if you get in the heavy grass, you can't even get it to restart because there's so much grass around those blades, it makes it just about impossible to pull the start rope. But anyway, the Isotunes Pro, great. I don't think they reduce the noise as much as the 3M work tunes, at least for me. I have trouble getting them tight in my ears. I've tried, there's a couple of different sizes of those earbuds that go on the, the Isotunes Pro 2.0, and I'm using, I believe, the medium ones. I just can't get them to stay tight. They loosen up in the vibration of the mowing, um, but they do allow me to wear a hat. So that's why you see here, I'm wearing those instead of the work tunes, and Jennifer's enjoying the work tunes as that mower gives her nothing but trouble in the deep grass. She's a, a great worker. Um, certainly appreciate that she's willing to help out with something like this. And you can see, you know, I know it, I hate to even say it because she's gonna listen to the video, but she's working way harder here than I am. I'm just driving around on zero turn, having no trouble while the push mower keeps falling out every couple seconds. She comes and has to them. And, and she probably pulled started that thing a thousand times just doing this area because it clogs up so fast and then stalls out. So she definitely had the tougher job here. And maybe this is a good commercial opportunity. You know, on the left-hand side of the screen, you see life with the Toro Time Cutter. Right-hand side, you see life without the Toro Time Cutter. And the constant struggle of trying to mow that grass and keep that mower running. I laugh, but I do feel bad for her because I know that's a pain. The mower keeps clogging up. So my final thoughts on the 3M Work Tunes and Isotunes Pro 2.0. If I didn't have to wear a hat, I'd go with the 3M Work Tunes all day long. I like the Bluetooth connection and the AM FM radio. Uh, the Isotunes Pro, they work really good because you can wear a hat with them or wear a uh, hard hat with them. But for me, they don't reduce the noise as much as the Work Tunes and they're not as comfortable. I kind of like that the Work Tunes totally surround your ear and it keeps not only the noise out but just makes it more of a comfortable fit than trying to put those little uh, sponge earbuds into your ear. And I know you're probably asking, and I know she asked me afterwards, why did you make me push mow that? Well, when we talked to the property owners, 
there's actually a, a hole there, kind of a sinkhole. There used to be a house there, and that's where the basement was, and there's not quite enough fill dirt. So there's a, a pretty good divot there in the ground. And the property owner mentioned to me that he wouldn't drive a tractor over it. Now, when, when he said a tractor, I was assuming he meant, you know, like my John Deere tractor or something more like that. I was perfectly content driving the time cutter over that particular low spot. The time cutter doesn't weigh a whole lot. It's a pretty wide base, so it's, I don't think it's going to sink in the ground very much there. But Jennifer did hear me say that I wouldn't be able to take the tractor on that, and she assumed that meant I couldn't take the time cutter on it. So that's why she's trying to mow that low spot. And when she was mowing it the whole time, I was thinking it must be really rough. She must be thinking that the time cutter won't be able to go down in there, or maybe it's soft and she's afraid the time cutter will fall in. But I think we found out here shortly that the time cutter works perfectly fine in that area, and it was so much easier than her doing the push mowing. The other thing that we weren't sure about is the time cutter going up and down that bank where you see Jennifer pushing the mower right now. But the time cutter going up and down uh, perpendicular to the slope of the bank works perfect up and down towards the driveway and then up over that little hillside. The time cutter actually does a really good job cutting that. So, you know, just another example of why the time cutter is a, a much better option than push mowing. Um, I will mention here, and I, I didn't realize it until we after we left this, but you see all those pine trees in the background. This particular property has a lot of pine trees. And what I didn't realize is that the pine trees have so many roots that stick up. And I actually did hit a couple roots with the time cutter. And uh, in hindsight, I wish I would have mowed it with something else first because I bent two blades on the Toro time cutter, catching little bits of roots that you really can't see because they're within the grass. The time cutter kind of sinks down into the grass and then you catch those with the blades of the mower. But, you know, maybe the next time I'll take something else to mow, not sure, or I'll just learn where those roots are over time so that I can avoid, avoid that area and just hit it with the weed whacker or push around it with the push mower. So here's where Jennifer and I are having a conversation and I'm saying, I think I can do this low spot without you push mowing it.
So for about a half an hour, maybe a little bit longer, we mowed just this section of the yard. It was really high. It actually would either need raked or mowed again. So I'm gonna move the mower deck down to three and a half. I mowed this at four inches before. I'm gonna try three and a half going over it again, mulch it up a little bit, and then hopefully it won't need raked. Jennifer's asked me to get the FS55R steel trimmer started, and she's gonna do that whole bank. <laughs> no. So how I start this is three prime pumps. Turn the ignition to on, which is the straight line. Choke to up. Hold this in with your hand. Pull this up with your fingers. Then once it feels like it's gonna start like that, put the choke back down to normal, and then it should start. So easy, anybody can do it. Right here, I'm moving the truck and the trailer. You never wanna do any weed whacking around a vehicle. Not only does the grass get all over the side of it, but if you'd hit a little stone or stick, those can fly up and could cause damage to a vehicle. So. You always want to make sure that no one, no thing is around when you're weed whacking. As another note, when I'm weed whacking near the road, I always watch for cars, and if a car is coming, I stop. Same thing up on mowing near a road. I don't blow the clippings out, and I always turn the deck off when I see an oncoming car. I think that's just being polite and respectful of the vehicles and equipment that people work hard for and want to keep nice. done mowing at this new property that we're taking care of and it took us about two hours and 15 minutes so you know the first time you're mowing something you go a little bit slower you're watching for rocks and in this case there's a lot of roots this property has a lot of pine trees and those pine trees create a lot of rooted areas so with the time cutter I had to be really conscious and lift up the deck a lot going over those roots what did you think about mowing? she said what did you say earlier about mowing somebody else's place 
it's just like cleaning a house. It's a lot more fun than most somebody else's clean. Yeah. So we did have fun mowing this for the first time. I think it'll be fun to mow it throughout the summer. And uh, I think we learned some lessons here, things that we would do differently the next time. Definitely, I would change my mowing pattern in the big open field. So I'll show you that on the next time we come up here and mow. But I think it's gonna be a fun property to mow. I think my new specialty is gonna be weed eating banks. Yeah, I'll put a clip in. Jennifer did a great job weed eating that bank. Once I showed her that you didn't have to hold the throttle, you could actually lock the throttle on then I think it was easier. I can't squeeze. All right, so thank you for watching. If you like videos like this, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. We'll see you again the next time. I did want to show you, I had asked before about this chute. Remember, this doesn't fit in the trailer with the chute down, and I didn't want to have to drill a hole, but I found with a bungee link, a bungee strap that is just about, let's say 18 inches long. I can get down over the bottom there, and over top of my control lever here, and that keeps it pulled in when I pull in the trailer. So there's a tip for you. If you wanted to lift your chute up just when pulling in and out of a trailer, without drilling a hole in it.